All right, welcome back everybody. We're in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada with our former guest, Elsa. How you doing? Hi, I'm okay, how about you? Oh, dude, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, Elsa. Um, remind us how old you are again? Um, I am 31 now. And what was your profession before? Um, I used to be a social worker. Um, I worked in mental health and substance abuse. Um, and then I also um, was a child protective services investigator for like two years. How long have you been using drugs? Um, about 10 years. 10 years? Yeah. Okay, and, and when did you come to Vegas? Um, I've been here since, um, like, actually, gosh, um, Thanksgiving of um, 2017 or 2018. I've um, okay. been here for about five years. Five years? Yeah. All right, and you've been homeless the whole time? No, um, I lived, I had an apartment for the first um, four-ish years, but um, I've been homeless for a year and a month now. So, since our last uh, interview, you were uh, staying in the Fremont area and you're still here? Yep. Now, you were telling us about a boyfriend that you love dearly. Yeah. What's happened with him? Um, he got arrested, well, we both got arrested together back in um, June and um, he is still locked up. And um, yeah, they had another court case or court hearing last week and it just they just keep continuing his case. Like, I don't understand. It's like the legal system is completely failing him. So, oh, okay. which fucking sucks, but. How long have you been away from him now? Um, since June 23rd. So okay. it feels like six years, but like literally the only reason I'm still in Vegas right now is because I'm waiting on him to get out or something. I don't know. Like I literally, I've been sitting out here hoping that he'll get out so that we can move back to Virginia because I want to get my life back together, but. Okay, now remind us again, you have loving parents. Yes. That are waiting for you. Mm -hmm. I know willing to take you back in. Yeah. And I learned, I just learned this today, you have a company named after you? Yeah, um, my parents, um, back when I, like back in 1994, they started a company called um, GenFab. Um, it was a, well it still is, but it's a metal fabrication and machine shop that um, they named after me because my, my government name is actually Jennifer. Yeah. Um, so it's Gen Jennifer, um, Jennifer Fabrication. Your story is unique, you know, yeah. most, I would say, yeah, most of the people that I interviewed have had a rough upbringing and um, it's been bad from day one for many of my, unfortunately, for many of my guests. Right. Where in your case, your situation is um, you came from loving parents, you had a great home life, uh, great schooling, you obviously have a high IQ, you went to college, um, you're very pretty. Thank you. Uh, very nurturing environment you grew up in. Mm -hmm. Basically, what led you astray? Um, kind of not knowing how to deal with life. Um, I'm an only child, and I know I was reading through the comments on my previous uh, previous video, and people, I think a lot of people think that I'm just like an ent entitled, like spoiled little brat that is like, I don't know, just fucking off and like t not not utilizing, you know, anything that all any of the opportunities and resources that have been given to me. But I don't know. I I grew up as an only child with like I've always been like the weird quote weird kid, like the I don't know. I had never really, like I dealt with like, uh, I had some like major losses kind of like back to back to back. Like um, when I, right before I, I would start college, my uncle who was like my second father pretty much passed away um, unexpectedly with the heart attack. And that was like a huge freaking like blow. And then right as soon as he passed away, I found out that like this man that I knew and loved and like thought was perfect had been like abuse, abusing my um, aunt the entire time they were married. And a your uncle? Yeah, and horrible alcoholic. like. He apparently was drinking like a gallon of vodka every every weekend and I had no fucking clue and beating the hell out of my aunt and like I didn't, I mean I didn't know any of this, like in my head this perfect man just like crumbled in front of me and then after he passed away, um, my after I graduated from college, um, like this, like pretty much the same, um, around the same time, my this dude that I grew up with like as my like brother, um, he passed away from a heroin OD and he'd been asking me for help and like helping get off drugs. I hadn't even done drugs at that point. I didn't even know what heroin looked like or anything. And I felt like I failed him. And I don't know, I, that was a huge, huge loss and blow to me. And I didn't know how to deal with any of those losses. Did you have support at the time? I did. Like Could my you talk to people? Yeah, my parents have always been there for me. Like, like they're very, very supportive, always have been. But I don't know, I, I just don't, didn't know how to deal with it. Plus the trauma of, you know, going into this profession that was like, they said, you know, you always have to leave your work at work and, and not take it home. but. Like I found out I can't have kids, so for when I was on CPS, like to me, my, my kids, my clients were my kids, and like leaving them at work and like just shutting that part of my brain off was fucking impossible. Like you couldn't have kids, why? Um, I have endometriosis and polycystic ovarian syndrome, okay. and so um, like that's the only thing I've ever wanted to do is be a mom. And what's so, the prognosis for that? No kids ever? Um, it's it's not not 100% negative or 100% that I can't do it, but more than likely not. Like I did get pregnant one time and. Um, I had a miscarriage, it was awful. I'm sorry. 
when was that? Um, back in 2020, and I started shooting up the next day. Oh, was that the first time? Or oh, that's a miscarriage. Like I couldn't stop doing heroin when I was pregnant, uh. and um, like after after I that was a fucking horrible miscarriage. Like I, I ended up on. Um, like having to walk home like from the hospital without pants on wrapped up in a blanket because I was bleeding so much and the hospital just discharged me with like without pants on and walked like two miles home by myself found out that my ex at the time was fucking his girl ex-girlfriend in my bed at, like while I was having the miscarriage oh, and I literally so started sorry. shooting up the next day you said that was the first time you used it um it was the first time I ever shot up what like, did you do before that any other drugs um yeah I, I still I still use meth and heroin but I just, just smoked them and or okay. I snorted the meth and um, smoked the heroin. what age did you start um, using? I, I was, I graduated college at 20 and I started using it at like 20, 21. You graduated at 20 years old? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you must have been advanced. Yeah, and I graduated in three years. Okay, what do you, how old were you when you graduated high school? 17. Okay. Yeah. I didn't ask you this last time, I like to ask this question because we have a lot of teachers that are uh -huh. viewers. Who is your favorite teacher? His name is Mr. Davis. Um, we have, our, like, this is just fun. We have the same birthday, and he's my government teacher, and honestly, can't really remember anything about what he taught, but we watched The Office a lot during yeah. class, and it was super fun. Okay, uh, Elsa, so we're talking earlier, and you said that you encountered some uh, bad people in yeah. the last few months. Um, Can you describe what happened on the streets? Well, um, one of the, like, the, this isn't about people, but one of the main things that um, I've, accomplished the last couple months is um getting off heroin but moving straight to fentanyl yay Congratulations. no oh fentanyl yeah oh, okay i thought you said methadone <laughs> no no fentanyl um okay. but i pretty much quit shooting up which is good except for shoot up meth but okay. um and in the process like i met this dude who was just giving me like every single day he'd show up at like my camp or whatever and just like hand me like pretty much handfuls of fentanyl pills for free and um like now um then he could just quit coming by and so because he started like asking for like sex sexual favors and in, in response for or, like in you know whatever as payment for him and i told him to go fuck off okay. and so no more free pills and now horrible drug addiction to fentanyl and okay. like now the i'm trying to figure out how to like fund that addiction which is fun okay can you tell us the difference between heroin addiction and fentanyl addiction um fentanyl addiction is tenfold ten thousand times worse i think um like, I mean, it's better because you, for the most part, you smoke them instead of smoke, because they're, they're pills. They're like little round blue pills. And you pretty much, you smoke them instead of sh shooting them up. But um, they are, um, fentanyl is way more powerful than heroin, way more deadly. And my, two of my best friends have actually died in the past month from it. I'm sorry. They, um, there was four people and they, um, they all like did like snorted lines or they crushed up and snorted lines of it. And two, two of them, like they all passed out. Like, and two, two of them, um, died and one of them ended up in the ICU and one of them survived. I mean, until two of them ended up surviving, one of them was in the ICU for like almost a month. And it was all from the same like batch, like it's crazy. And I don't know, rest in peace, Bo, and rest in peace, Adrian. Rest in peace. They were great guys. Do you, um, have you thought about trying to get help or clean? Oh, um, I, I don't, I, yeah, I actually went to detox. Did you? Yeah, um, I overdosed and um, like they had to Narcan me twice and um, I went to detox for, but I only stayed like five days and I left because I wanted to gamble, which is stupid as fuck. But <laughs> uh, they started talking about like keno in, the, in the, my detox and I was like, man, I've got to go gamble. So I left and went to gamble. Where'd you go detox? <laughs> I'm at Westcare. It's a, okay. like a public, um, okay. like a pub, whatever, public health fucking detox place. It was actually really nice and shout out to Westcare because they're awesome. What did they want you to do um, after the detox? They um, they were talking about more like an inpatient, like, um, like at least 30, 30 day program, like at the very minimum, like okay. I think it's gonna be a lot more than 30 days. Like I'd love to, I don't mean, it sounds stupid because I'd love to be clean and love to have like a norm, quote normal life again, but I can't even imagine what that would look like. Well, you can't. Have you ever been to that treatment before? No, that's the first time I've ever been. Okay, well, let's go back to your social worker days and we're having the same conversation. Uh -huh. What would you, how would you advise? I would tell um, them to suck it the fuck up and <laughs> and um to quit being such a like spoiled brat i guess like i know that the way i'm living is ridiculous and it's unsafe and it's stupid and it's just like i'm literally playing like russian roulette with my life and it's killing my parents and I've, my dad's elderly and it's not, he's got all his hours. i'm sorry i'm serious elsa um i'm actually here for a while this time I'm willing to help you. I've got a friend here who's a social worker. 
we actually want to help you. Anything we can do, we can call your parents, get your flight back. I mean, okay, you've never been to treatment before? They're gonna take your phone away, okay? Yeah. Do you know that? Do you yeah. know what they're gonna do to you well, when you get I mean, there? I went, I went to the West Care place for like five days and uh -huh. it was so like, oh my gosh, it was so nice. I was on meds, they, like I got to sleep, like they yeah. fed me, it was so nice to have food. How are you gonna deal with them taking your phone away and? I don't never, like I never even have a charge. Like I just got it two days ago right. actually. That's one of the big complaints about a lot of our guests. Yeah, I don't care about having yeah. a phone. Yeah. Like I, I never have one anyway. Like I usually have a tablet, that, I, but it got stolen like three days ago. Okay. Right the day before I got my phone, so. Is there anything we can do to motivate you? Did you talk to your parents? Yeah, I need to call them since it's Thanksgiving, but... Um, how, how about we call them? But, yeah. I mean, tomorrow or something. Yeah, I, I plan to. I gotta, I'm like, was one more way to charge my phone when I ran into you guys, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, I plan to, I'm gonna call them for Thanksgiving. I wish I was there. Do you wanna go there? No, not without Chino. <laughs> not without Chino? Okay, let's talk about Chino. I haven't talked to him, like, in, like, two months. Okay. And I you really set on this guy? Is he, when he gets out, is he gonna use? I don't know, They're, I'm trying to make him go to drug court. Right. So hopefully he'll be clean. Like, I, I wanna like I wanna be clean. He, he told me I needed to be clean when he gets out. So I wanna be, and he, he'll be so disappointed when he finds out I'm on fentanyl. <laughs> now you were telling us that you had met someone else. How long ago was that? Um, well, I'd known him, like, I've known him for a while and we, we've just been homies or whatever, but um, we tried to date, but it was a freaking disaster. Like, um, he was trying to control every single aspect of every move I made. And like, he actually gave me a phone. Like, I was so excited to have a phone. It was the first like nice phone that I've had. And um, then he said that um, I wasn't giving him enough attention or some stupid shit. And he like took it back. Yeah. And I was like, he told me that if I wanted to act right, I could have my phone back. And I was like, that's fucking stupid. I'm not a kid. Like, yeah. and I don't know. He would just like he was screaming at me in public and like. Yeah being all kinds of crazy so I was like yeah fuck this I'm not doing this I mean you're lonely out here you need protection yeah um, just super I understand lonely. that now you said that you had some um, perverts harass you the last few months yeah like this one dude um, has been like stalking me and he keeps popping up everywhere like um, trying to like get me to like coerce me into his car and shit and um, like I don't know I keep telling him to fuck off but he keeps popping up and like um, one day like the first time I ever met him he, he um, asked me if I wanted some candy it was right around Halloween so I was like Hell yeah, like I'll take some candy. And um, he get, gets out of his like a SUV, it was like a RAV4. And he gets out of his SUV and like pops open the back and he has these two little like Tupperware things like side by side in the back of his um, car. And he opens them both up and each one's like just one single piece of chocolate. And I'm like, what in the hell is this? And I was um, I was like, dude, get away from me because it creeped me out. I thought it was like some kind of like way to roofie me or some shit. So um, since then, like he's pulled up like and tried to get me in the car like four or five times. and. Like one night, well, more than that, because one night it was um, four times. Like every stoplight, he would like pull up on me, and I was walking, and um, like I was like, "Dude, get the fuck away from me! Why, what? What don't you understand about that?" And I don't know. It's 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 super weird and creepy, and I don't know. It, it, but then the, today, like this dude um, gave me literally gave me a hundred, like offered me like too much room to shower or whatever, which I normally say no because uh, I don't trust anybody. But yeah. um, I, for some reason, I said yeah. And he, like he um, gave me a hundred dollars once I got up to the room. Yeah. And uh, I'm expecting him to ask me for like a blowjob or something, and, I'm, yeah. and I, um, he was like, "Let me just see your skin," and I, and I was like, "What?" And um, so I had on like um, I was wearing like pantyhose and like um, like a like a onesie thing. You couldn't see any of my skin or like like I mean it was like everything was covered or whatever. But um, he was like he like let me he said let me touch your leg. And he like touched like the like inside of my thigh and like the outside of my thigh at the same time. He's like, "Okay, your skin's nice." I don't like, what are you gonna, like, are you trying to see if it'll fit? Like, are you trying to wear my skin? Or like, what are you gonna try to, like, what? Yeah. And um, he, he was like, I don't wanna do anything sexual with you, but can I give you another $100 to make out with me? And I was like, um, no. And he was like, you won't take $100 to make out. And I was like, I think making out is way more intimate than sex. So no, I'm not kissing you for $100. Yeah. And um, he was like, but you're a whore, right? And I'm like, dude, I will literally punch you in the face. <laughs> How tall are you? Like about six foot. You could knock him out, huh? I wanted to, but I didn't. Um, he was just like, okay, 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 but you're not. Your skin's nice, and I'm like, the fuck, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know, it was really weird. But then um, he was he was trying to hang out with me, and I literally like took my shower and darted out of his room, and he was trying to chase me out of the room, and I was like, fuck, no, this dude's so a serial didn't feel killer. threatened by him. I mean, I was like super uneasy, but like, what's the worst is gonna do? Kill me? Like, uh -huh. who cares? <laughs> That's interesting. You said you'd rather have sex with someone than to make out with them because it's more intimate. Yeah. Okay. On that subject. Um, I know you've never worked uh, as a 
prostitute, but you had some experience. Right. And wh when was that? Um, the like the back in Virginia when I was just um, I would do like pain pills recreationally. Like I, mean, I was majorly on pain pills. Um, I like had sex with this, this old guy for um, like twenty five like um, perk tens. And twenty five uh, what? Like perk set ten okay. How milligrams. How much is that worth? Um, it was like two hundred fifty bucks maybe. Okay. Like um, I was so desperate for him, I had no money, yeah. so. Um, I would like agree to it and this, I'll never forget like this this dude's name was turtle and because he looked like a turtle and like a turtle. oh my god and afterwards like I don't know I would during it he kept trying to kiss me and I was like dude I, like get, ugh. Yeah. and um I just remember feeling so fucking like grimy and dirty and thinking like I'll never do this ever again ever and I didn't for a long time until like out here um, my I dated this girl for a while yeah, we, um, my, my girl, my well, ex-girlfriend now, um, Rainbow and I, like, we um, met this guy at 7-Eleven and um, driving this super nice car, like, um, like a Mercedes-Benz um, convertible was, like, he said it was worth, like, $90,000 or something. It was, like, hella freaking nice. Start to, like, he gave us a ride back to our apartment and um, we, for, like, ended up performing, like, oral sex on him for $200, which I was just, like... Both of you? Yeah, uh, at right. the same, because he said it was, like, his dream of his to have, like, a two-girl, like, um you know, do that at the same time to him, and he never had it done, and he said, like, we were pretty or whatever. And um, he said, like, he does, um, he has those, like, Airbnbs or whatever, so you just had, like, fuck off money, yeah. like, tons of money, and um, so, like, $200, and it took us, like, five minutes, and it was, like, nice as hell, like, you know, with 200 bucks, and the dude was hot, so we didn't care, and, um, because her and I were, like, super, like, promiscuous, like, even though we were together, we had, like, hella threesomes and stuff with, like, other people. This the young lady I met earlier? No, oh, this was, okay. um, another, another, another girl. Now um, you said you were very promiscuous, and what is that? We guys party with other people? Yeah, um, like, we, not with other girls, like, we were, like, strictly with only, like, each other, like, um, girl-wise, but we had a lot of threesomes with, like, other dudes and shit, but, okay. um. Now, would these guys pay for this, or no, just, just, just friends? Yeah, just for okay. fun, like, okay. or they'd, um, I mean, they wouldn't necessarily pay for it, but like they'd like you know like smoke us out or like yeah. bring drugs over or whatever. We just okay. had like like party in and yeah. hook up and um, like the only person that we didn't have like end up having a threesome with was the dude that we were both dating and hiding from each other. Like we were having it was like a whole like Jerry Springer thing. It was like the dude that I talked about in a previous video that um, like I let ruin my life or whatever. And uh -huh. she's actually the ex girlfriend that he was having sex with during my miscarriage like the whole it was the whole oh this is like, jerry springer okay it's no, no. jerry springer's fuck yeah. like <laughs> okay so this is the boyfriend you were talking about in the last video yeah and you were deeply in love with him and oh, he ruined your life yep well i let him but, ruin my life, yeah. but he was dating your yeah. friend yeah he okay. was dating like because like him and i like we all started off as friends whatever and when i first met him him and rainbow were dating okay. and then um they break up and him and I start dating and Rainbow hated me, wanted to kill me, whatever. And then he goes to jail and then Rainbow and I start dating and she moves in with me. And then while he's in jail, he's trying to play both of us like at the same time and we're both like totally falling for it, stupid as fuck. And then he gets out of jail and tries to date both of us. And so we try to have like this whole like, um, you know, like whatever, like group love type thing, like um, polyamorous relationship. Yeah. And it lasted like 10 minutes before everybody just was got so jealous and got over it and then it all went, all went back to him trying to play both of us against each other. It was all bad. So how did that end? Um, it ended by um, her slitting my tires and busting my apartment window out and him um, busting the door down to my apartment because I had his ketamine apparently and uh, it was, it's, it's okay, let me, insane. You said he had an apartment? How long ago was this? Um, this was like, this was, Right before I lost my apartment, like a year ago. Oh, so just a year ago. Yeah. So how are you managing all this? If you're lots using... of drugs. So how are you making money? Um, back then I had it like back then it was like pretty much just gambling and living off the um, PUA like um, unemployment, okay. um, COVID shit. I had hell. Of, I mean, I had so much money back then, okay. like because I was getting six hundred dollars a week in unemployment from the like legally from the government, and then I got um, the two like um, the whatever I can't remember what kind of loans they were, but like the small business loans or whatever that yeah. were um, was like almost $6,000 each. Yeah. Plus I was winning, gambling a lot. Like, I mean, I had so much money. It was, it was wow. stupid. And I still, yeah. like there was four adults living in a one bedroom apartment yeah. and we all had just fuck off money. None of us could, like we didn't pay rent. We even had like um, government assistance helping pay rent. We still yeah. managed to lose our apartment. It was okay. ridiculous. Uh, let's go back to your parents. How are they feeling right now? I mean, have you, have you talked to them? Um, I've, it's been um, probably almost a week since I talked to them, but okay. I try to check in with them regularly and like it's killing them like being okay. away like especially my dad like it hurts so much to talk to him because yeah. i know how much i'm hurting them like yeah. and it's pretty much like i hate to say it's like out of sight out of mind like mm -hmm. 
which I mean, I think about them constantly, but I don't have to like feel the, like the, I don't have to deal with the actual like pain of like seeing their like broken hearts and shit. Like it's fucking awful. And I know I'm selfish and awful for not being there. My buddy here, you met as a social uh -huh. worker and he has a lot of experience in this. Um, will you be willing to hang out with us tomorrow so we can get a hold of your parents, have a talk with them and see if we could plan something out for you? Probably, yeah. Okay, what's holding you back? Chino, drugs, I don't know. It's Chino? And the, the, like the pull of the city, like I've tried to leave like. But you need to fix yourself before you think about Chino. And I've tried to leave the city four times and every single time I come back within like a week, I can't stay away from it. It's Why the drugs? No, I don't I don't even know if it's that, it's just like everything. Like the, it's got like, if you talk to anybody who lives out here, everybody says the same thing. Like once you get in Vegas, you can't leave. Like it's got some kind of like. I agree with you because every time I leave, yep. I come back on the weekends, uh -huh. but now I'm here for a while. Yeah. I can't wait to get back here. And I, I don't do drugs. And I hate it out here. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I say that, but I mean, it's like, it's, it's, it's exciting. Like, you know, every, no day is ever the same as the next. Like, yeah. like every day is something different. Like, it's, I don't know, my friends are here. Like, my, yeah. I say friends very loosely. Like, you have friends out there? Oh, uh, I did, but I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody out there. Like, I pretty much just left without really telling anybody where I was going or what I was doing. I just kind of dipped. So, uh, Thanksgiving's tomorrow. Yeah. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? Um, honestly, I forgot it was even the holiday. There's so. a big celebration just up the street right down there tomorrow. Yeah, that's what, that's what that yeah. um, lady said, so I guess I'll maybe probably go to that. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, we'll be going over there. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, to help out. Cool. Before I forget, um, do you give us permission to use this video on our YouTube channel? Yep. And do you have a new email or any kind of um, way we can contact you? Let's see. Subscribers um, can contact you? Elsa, E L S A, Escobar, E S C O B A R 666 at gmail.com. Escobar? Yeah, it's my um, ex. Um, he does a graffiti, oh, okay. He's a graffiti artist. Okay. And uh, his, his government name's um, last name is Escobar. Okay, Elsa. Uh, I'm never, I've never met Chino. I'm not yeah. trying to diss him. And I'm probably going to get some hate. <laughs> but what I'm about to say, um, just listen to your story where you've been, how far you've come, you know? Uh -huh. um, deep down inside, do you feel like, do you feel that Chino's not right for you? Before you answer that, mm -hmm. uh, think about the Elsa that was not on drugs. Uh -huh. The Elsa that had a fabulous career. Right. The Elsa that had a supporting family, high self-esteem, uh -huh. thought positive about herself. Would that Elsa even look at Chino or someone like Chino? Not Chino, but someone like Chino. Right. Well, that, that Elsa never existed. Um, I've never had high self-esteem. I've always been like the, you know, back then I was like, like, before I started using drugs, I was really heavy. Like I weighed like 220 pounds. Okay. And that's um, not that heavy, but go ahead. Because you're six feet tall. But go yeah, ahead. Yeah, but still, I, I mean, I was like, I was like the bigger girl. Like I was always, I could always say, I would joke around, and say I was the funny fat friend. So I'm a, I'm 220, so I'm really fat. No, but for a girl, <laughs> girl, guys carry weight different. Like <laughs> no, you're not fat at all. But um, you know, I, I don't know. I, um, Chino is Asian. I've never like never dated an Asian guy before, and um, not that it's not necessarily anything to do with it. But I don't, I don't really know how to answer that because I don't know like. I mean, I think I think he's absolutely like he's the guy that I've always dreamed of. Like he takes care of me. Like he like he makes sure I'm safe. Like he makes sure I'm eating. Like like I mean, of course he buys me drugs. He, he enables the fuck out of me by taking me gambling. And you know he uses drugs. And you know he's a gambling addict too. But like I really feel like he actually genuinely loves me and loves me for who I am, regardless of drug use or regardless of any of the our addictions or anything. But he's like. When, I, when he asks me if I'm okay, like he, he actually sits there and listens. Like he doesn't just like brush me off or, okay. you know, I don't feel like he wants to be with me because of like the fact that I'm quote pretty or, or, what, yeah. or whatever. I feel like he wants to be with me because of like who I am. Okay. Now what have you found out that he was in a relationship and cheating on you in jail for the last six months? Okay. Well, I mean, he like he's bi, so like um, he used to date guys. Like Oh, he used to date guys? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I don't know. It, it would devastate me. And But okay. like I think I'm pretty sure that he was like... Um, pulling tricks before like he got arrested because um I don't know, I've heard some shit and stuff but like so Chino was uh pulling tricks while he was with you or yeah uh, I'm okay. pretty sure but for what for money and drugs yeah okay. and to support all of our habits because okay. it's pretty expensive to fund two people's gambling okay, addictions okay, okay. like drug addictions and you know plus all the necessities of life which he used to like um he used to live with this dude who would like like make him trade sexual favors for um, for drugs like before um, before we got together. So and that dude's evil, but okay. like he would literally like 
he would like help you out. Like apparently he helps out like young dudes with drugs and then put like says, Oh you don't owe me, you don't owe me, you don't owe me but then all of a sudden he's like, Oh wait, you owe me for A B C D and E and it makes it so the dudes can't pay him back with any other way except for like yeah. sexual favors. So Okay, so this is Chino. Yeah. And He'll probably kill me for saying this one. But do you, this is the guy you want to um, yep. spend the rest of your life with? Possibly yep. adopt children? And yep. Do you see it being clean or do you think you'd be on the streets doing this? Um, definitely, like, I would never try to, like, have involve kids in any way if I was living on the streets. But, I, um, like, I see, like, I, we were literally, like, when we got arrested, we were literally trying to, like, save up money and get the fuck out of here and, like, go, like, start new lives clean, like. Okay. And he wants me to be clean when he, when he gets out of jail, whenever, whatever that is. And he's going to be doing drug court, so hopefully we'll get it together and... Hope you're not mad at me for saying all those no, things. Oh, never. Okay. You're amazing, Elsa. I wish you the best. You have my contact information, so you're gonna give me a call tomorrow, right? Yep. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, we're gonna try to help you out. You have any questions for me? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs>